Hey guys, this is Daniel from CNC Labs. This is just gonna be a follow-up video from our assembly, and today we're gonna to be mounting the Vortex track onto our wasteboard. So we're gonna be looking at some of the clearance, some of the table setup that you'll need to do, make sure you have things right. We've moved over to our 12 by 30 machine. It's a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier for you to follow along, but this process will be the exact same essentially for the 12 by 30, 30 by 30, and 48 by 30 long mills. There's just a couple things we'll need. These are the quarter 20 by three quarter inch screws. There's two bags included with your kit. And then these are the threaded inserts, which you may or may not be familiar with. Otherwise just need a six millimeter Allen key. If you don't have one of these handy, you can use a seven thirty seconds Allen key if needed. Just your regular four millimeter Allen key included with your kit. And obviously Sharpie, marker, whatever you want. First, you'll want to make sure that you've got enough of your spoil board surface to fit this. You just want to lay out the track and see if everything is going to fit. You don't want anything bumping. You can see if we've got this lifted over the edge, it's going to interfere with the unsurfaced section of our waste board. So you just want to make sure you've surfaced as enough as you can to avoid that. If you have a Mark 1 and you're using the Mark 1 dust shoe, you'll want to remove that dust shoe bracket just so you can get over to the right side a little bit more and machine another two inches or so of uh, surface material. Make that check and make sure it's sitting flush on your surface. We have some height clearances we'll want to look at. For a standard table, everything should be fine. If you have a raised wasteboard surface on top of your existing base, you'll want to make sure that you raise the two left and right Y rails. As you can see, there's a little bit of a height clearance issue here with the longest bit. So you'll just want to raise the machine up to match that uh, center wasteboard section. On the Mark 1 long mill, it's a little close as well, uh, so you definitely want to raise those two left and right Y reels. With all that said, let's get started mounting this. First things first, we need to make sure that we have our latest version of G-Sender. Currently, at this time of launch, we have G-Sender Edge, which has support for the rotary axis, but, you know, check our website, find the latest version, download that. Any of those latest versions will have support for performing the mounting. So we'll actually be using the machine to mill out these holes and that's all built into G-Center. Basically, first things first, we'll lay out our track and make sure it's kind of where we want it. There's no particular spot in the Y direction it needs to sit, just wherever you're most comfortable. People will usually find that to be somewhere in the front. You can check each of these holes and basically check the first of the two sets on the left. Um, so this hole and that hole, this hole, this hole and these two. If you have the 48 inch track extension, lay this out as well at the end and check again these two holes, these two holes for any kind of interference. So if you have a T-track set up on your machine, you basically just want to make sure that you're dodging those. If that's the case and everything looks fine, we'll continue. If not, you'll need to do a different setup of drilling out these holes. So skip ahead to our next part where we talk about that a bit more. So we'll go ahead and mark the bottom left corner hole with our Sharpie, just a small point. And this will be our reference when we go and next bore out those actual holes for our inserts. And this is where we switch over to G-Sender. Make sure your machine's powered on. One quick thing we want to do as well is run our machine all the way to the back in the Y-axis direction um, until the stepper skip. This will just make sure we're fully square and all aligned before we start drilling out all these holes. We're ready to start doing our mounting hole drilling. You just want to insert whatever flat end mill you're going to be using. For this, you can either use a quarter inch end mill or an eighth inch end mill. Um, doesn't really matter so much as they're flat. MDF is quite forgiving, so. We've got a quarter inch in our case, and we'll switch over to G-Sender where we can now jog our machine right towards the bit that we've, the little spot we've just marked. This doesn't need to be super precise or anything. We just want to get it roughly in the right spot, centered basically just over that spot. And the last thing we'll need to do is zero the Z axis. Again, this also isn't very precise. So here we're just gonna use paper method. Just shim this quickly. And that looks good to us. Now in G Center, we can navigate over to this new rotary tab you'll see here. We don't want to enable rotary mode or anything else, but you'll find at the bottom there is a rotary mounting setup button. So you click that. This opens a wizard up, and you'll see a couple options here. It's a little confusing, but this first option here is lines up, does not lines up. 
what we were talking about earlier, where we lay out the track and we check for any interference. In our case, we saw that there was no interference. We don't have any heat tracks on our waste board at all. And you can see these red arrows are showing the two whole sets that we were talking about earlier. So we're going to be mounting our track using these two. Now we have end mill diameter. Obviously, we have quarter inch, like we just said. And number of holes is six. This is a difference between the 30 inch track and the 48 inch track. Like we mentioned, the 48-inch track will have this extra set of holes. So this will be an extra one, two sets of holes, another four versus six. We have six holes, so we'll do this and send to visualizer. And this will all pop up on your main screen here. At this point, we just want to zero our X, zero our Y, zero the Z. Just like any other kind of job you might have already ran, we should be good to go. Don't forget your safety glasses. Let's turn this thing on. All right, so we've got our holes done. Naturally, the next step now is installing those inserts we were talking about before. We'll grab our six millimeter Allen key, and in our case, six inserts. If you have the 48 inch track, you'll have um, 10 inserts to install. You want to make sure these are basically as straight as you can get them. They should center themselves fairly well, but take your time with these. We've got our inserts all installed. It's time to lay our track out and we can finally mount this thing. You just want to make sure there's no dust or chips or anything underneath here before you lay it down. You align these two left sets of holes and grab our screws. Again, this is six screws if you have the 30 inch track or 10 screws if you have the 48 inch track. And these will work with just the regular four millimeter Allen key. I like to start at the corners. And so you'll notice the track might start to pull one way or the other. And that's just because these slots have tapered edges to help align and pull this track into alignment. And these don't need to be very tight either. There's six of them, so more than enough strength for holding this thing down. And as you can see, that's it. It's mounted. It's ready to go. Yeah, so as we mentioned earlier, we'll now show you the alternative hole drilling and mounting setup. The case that if your track is interfering with T-tracks or anything else on your waste board, you can obviously skip this section if this doesn't apply to you. And we'll next move on to the Y probing after that. If you've laid out your track um, and you have T-tracks or other waste board items, um, like you can see we've got here, you've noticed that you have an interference on one of these holes we talked about. This section is going to cover that. So you can see here our two left holes in the middle are colliding with our T-track. If we want to shift it, it's not going to work that way either. Basically, we're kind of forced to use these sets of holes to mount this properly. To do this, we will be, instead of drilling all six or all ten holes at once, we'll be drilling individual pairs. So we'll be doing these two, and we'll be doing either of these two one by one. Basically, to facilitate that, we're just going to be marking each set now instead of one pair. Look at any of the holes we want to use, in this case in the front two. Uh, we can use either the left or the right pair. It doesn't really matter. Um, we'll go with the right one just for fun. In this one, obviously, we know this is not usable. There's a T-track, so we'll mark the right side. This one, again, doesn't matter. Let's just use the left side. We've got our three dots marked out for the 30-inch track. Again, if you have a 48-inch track, you'll have 10 holes. So that means five holes, five points to mark out. Previously, in the default drilling section, we just marked one hole and ran it there. This time around, we'll be going to zero this one spot, running our program, and then moving it in the X direction to our next set of holes, running it again, and a third time at the last set. We're gonna start with uh, drilling our holes now, and we'll just connect to our machine and G-Sender. First thing you wanna do as well is run the machine all the way to the back, just sort of a good practice thing. So we'll run it all the way until it hits the ends and stalls out, just to make sure our entire X gantry is fully aligned. So it's a little loud and we can jog it forward again. You can use basically any flat end mill you want to use, uh, eighth inch or quarter inch end mill. Zeroing our bit onto the first hole here. And the Z height doesn't matter much either. We'll just be using a paper 
method two zero or z onto the waste board. That's pretty good. And obviously now in G Center we'll be doing the x zero and y zero z zero. Inside the rotary tab in our new version of G Center, you will find the rotary mounting setup button here, and this opens up a window. There's these two options at the top. There's lines up, does not line up. And in our case, uh, you saw our mounting track did not line up perfectly with where we can mount this in the T-Tracks. We will choose the does not line up option. And like we mentioned, we're using a quarter inch end mill. So select a quarter inch option. Uh, this graphic kind of explains maybe a little bit better what's going on here. So we've got this red set of arrows and this orange set of arrows. These are the two options for the two sets of holes we'll be drilling out for. We've opted to use the right side on this, so the orange set. And in the middle here, we had to use the, I think it was the orange side. We'll click send to visualizer. And this will just be one single piece of G-code that will do the bottom and top hole for that mounting. So yeah, we've got everything all zeroed. We will turn the rudder on. All right, so that's the first set of the top and bottom holes for our first set of holes. Now, you don't want to move the y-axis or anything else. You just need to jog the x-axis to the right. Let's speed this up a bit. Just want to jog this onto your next point. So this is the next marked point we made earlier. If you notice that this doesn't line up in the y-axis uh, direction, don't change anything with the y-axis. This is just because your track was skewed or you placed the point in the wrong spot. But zero your x-axis again, just right here. So we'll press zero. And without changing anything else, we'll turn the rudder back on. So that's our second set finished. And we've got one more set, so again, Jog our X axis all the way over that. You can see again, the Y axis is slightly off. Don't worry about that. We will zero the X axis once more. Again, nothing else changes. Let's just turn this on and press start. That's it for us. Uh, because we have the 30 inch track, we've only got these six holes to make. So we've got our six holes all cleaned up and ready to go. We'll grab our threaded inserts. Once again, we have six for our 30 inch track. Clean off your table once more, make sure there's no chips or dust and line these up with the holes you marked out previously. Last thing, just grab your screws. Six screws for us with our 30 inch and your standard Allen key wrench. I like to do these in the corners first. That's everything to get your Vortex mounted if you do have some interference with your T-Track. Um, we'll move on over back to the 12 by 30 long mill where we were showing the rest of the setup and continue on from there. But yeah, that's about it. We've got our entire Vortex mounted and we'll be aligning the y-axis with our rotary axis so that we'll be able to use this. This is essentially setting up the vortex into kind of rotary mode. But to do this probing and align the y-axis with your rotating axis, uh, we'll just need this banana plug cord included with every vortex. This is the same one used in the touch plate. If you already have one plugged in, just use that instead. And this end goes into the longboard controller, right into the probe and ground pin. The other opposite end, it's got a banana plug. This will plug right into the back of the vortex in the headstock. And this last bit will just attach to the router collet. Before we get to there, there's a couple things we'll need to do. One is we'll need to raise our router and lift this just about as high as you can. You can feel with your finger where it's flush. Now we'll need to jog this bit right over the top of the truck. As far as the bit you use for this, we generally might recommend using a V-bit or a tapered bit, any kind of ball-in bit. It works a little bit better, but you can generally get away with about anything. So we'll show you using this uh, flat end mill. You just want to get your bit roughly at the top of the center line of the truck. Lower it down, maybe about 10 millimeters above, similar to your touch plate if you're familiar. 
and we'll attach your magnet. Now we can go into the rotary window again here and you see the button that says Y-axis alignment. So press that and it'll start probing. We'll probe the front, back, top, do a bit of math to figure out where it is. One thing to note is that there's no continuity check like there is with the touch plate. So you absolutely want to make sure the magnet is secured. You want to make sure this banana plug is secured and there's no loose wires or anything going into your controller. We can move our magnet, move the banana plug, and now we've got our y-axis aligned perfectly with the rotating axis. You can jog this bit over, match it up with the tailstock point, kind of do a quick visual check, but it should be pretty close. So now we're ready to switch on to the A-axis mode, which is just plugging in our vortex and flipping the switch. We've got the two cables, or one cable, if you haven't installed the limit switch inside your vortex. Motor connector, you're familiar with maybe, and limit switch connector. These will just go into the switching module plug. So green connector goes to the green connector, obviously. Small plug in the bottom, there we go. Basically, we're ready now. We can switch this little switch to down position, which is A. And that basically just switches all of our controller's signal output to the rotary instead of the y-axis. So at this point, your y-axis is locked. It won't move. Any command sent will just move the rotary instead. One thing to note is that if you're a user that uses the uh, holding current option, which is this firmware called dollar sign one, and you have this set to 255 to keep your motors enabled at all times, you do want to depress the e-stop anytime you switch between Y and A mode. If this doesn't make any sense to you and it doesn't apply to you, then just ignore that. Now we can also go in G sender side and we can finally toggle that rotary mode. You'll get a little warning and it'll tell you what it's doing, updating some values, click OK. So you can see now our Y buttons are grayed out fully. We've got our X, our Z, and now we've got these A plus, A minus jog buttons down here. We're all ready to go. We have all of our rotary stuff set up now. So thanks for following on this video. Hopefully your Vortex is all ready to go and we'll have some more fun project videos in the future.